Hi everyone. <laughs> Hi everyone. Anthony Fantano, serious business. This is the internet. I'm the internet. Internet's busiest music nerd, and it's time for a review. Kareem Riggins, alone together. This guy is a multi instrumentalist, producer, and drummer, predominantly in the genre of jazz. <laughs> Well, despite the extensive jazz background of this Mr. Man, on this LP, hip hop is his calling. You could say it's actually been his calling for quite a while now, having his creative hands in production for artists such as Common, Eric Badu, The Roots, Slum Village, a group which of course is home to the infamous Jay Dilla, whose very sample heavy, colorful, and, and textured approach to hip hop production has made him pretty much a legend in underground rap circles. And that is a well that Kareem Riggins drinks from too artistically, as well as <laughs> contemporaries such as Madlib and, and countless other artists too. I would actually say so countless that there's a bit of, of saturation when it comes to hip hop production like this, and with artists out there such as Flying Lotus and all those people in the Brain Feeder Collective, as well as Clams Casino, Lex Luger, and Death Grips I would throw in there too. It's just a brave new world of hip hop production. The sound artists like Jay Dilla worked with can seem kind of old hat at this point. And to an extent, that may be true, but Riggins brings a myriad of, of instrumentals on this LP between about 34 tracks, and they've all kind of got different characteristics to them. And if you just kind of sit back and, and give this LP a chance, I think you'll hear what is happening on this album is pretty well executed, impressively so. This LP is just one of those moments where execution and, and great grooves transcends familiarity, transcends style, and, and even to an extent originality. And even though this is Riggins' debut LP in 2012, keep in mind he has been at it since the 90s. Guys like Madlib and Jay Dilla are in a way, peers, fellow collaborators, not just influences. While Riggins doesn't have the extensive back catalog and the influence that these two artists have, in a lot of ways he's pretty much cut from the same cloth. Because in a lot of ways he approaches beat production with that same mad scientist mindset. His music just has the sense that he would die for that ever long pursuit of all sounds, fat, smooth, and punchy. Like most beat LPs of this style, a lot of the songs on here run from about one to two minutes, you know, short tracks. But as I've said before, when it comes to albums in this genre, I don't really mind being abrupt if you're throwing a lot of material at me and in the short amount of time you allot yourself, you're able to make an emotional impact, able to kind of create a strong mood. And I will say that Riggins certainly has the power to do that, despite the fact that maybe this LP is a bit more disjointed than most albums in this style, simply because, yeah, you may have a two or three minute track on here, but it may go through a couple phases from beginning to end. Just a bunch of MPC sculpted mood pieces and motifs built of jazz, funk, and soul samples with the occasional bit of live instrumentation too. So I really kind of feel like I have no choice but to go through this LP just kind of mentioning some instrumental highlights. The track Round the Outside kicks off the LP with just a really fat analog synth. Wow, wow, wow. And this track just has a rush of rhythm from the kick drum to the snare, a bunch of hand percussion too. I think there's like a triangle, just some metallic sound in there too, and just a nice groove. Da, 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 the track Moogie Fugit comes in later. It's a great song as well, and just kind of has this farty little punctuated synth phrase, and it gets a little eerie with the, what sounds like a flute hanging in the background, and a keyboard that sounds a bit like a harpsichord. Definitely the most Halloween fit beat out of the whole bunch. <laughs> and the song Stadium Rock certainly lives up to its name with these heavy rushes of drum fills and, and guitar in between these shots of very distant background vocals kind of singing in unison, oh, hey. And the song Alto Flute 
doesn't really feel like it has a high-pitched alto flute on it. It actually feels like a low-pitched woodwind kind of playing this very hypnotic phrase as there's this rolling kick drum on the track that is just kind of mind-boggling to me. And the song Esperanza, one of my favorite beats on here, has some acoustic guitar in there, some flute as well, and it's just got this like, you know, sweet, lovely little melody. It reminds me of love, but like love gone sour. Like I totally just want to write a bunch of rhymes about falling out of love with somebody to this beat. And the song Harpsichord Session is, is quite literally a live instrumental jam with Kareem Riggins and, and some other players for a few minutes, and it sounds nice as well. And that's just the first half of this LP, which technically is a bit of an album in and of itself, because this album has been released as separate 12 inches as well, titled Alone and Together, and together they are kind of like a CD compilation alone together. So the second half of this LP does have kind of an intro track, does have an outro track, just like the first half does. It follows the same kind of disjointed path and, and is chock full of the very same variety, consistency, and element of surprise that, that pretty much makes the first half of the LP so good. Although I will say the four ending tracks of this LP, especially the closer, J. Dilla the Greatest, get pretty ambitious. As far as negatives on this LP go, I mean, it is heavily steeped in that J. Dilla beat production tradition. Like I said, Kareem Riggins comes from that school of thought. Nothing mind-blowingly new on this album, but if you are an appreciator of collections of instrumentals, I think it will be difficult to listen to this and kind of disregard it as nothing special. Because there's certainly a lot of great musical ideas here, great grooves, creativity. I wish some songs lasted longer, of course. There are other tracks on here, namely Esperanza, for example, where I do feel like I'm in love with the track more for the sample than what Kareem Riggins actually does with the sequencing of the song. Like, hey, you know, you're really letting the sample do all the work here. But still, I did love what was going on with this LP. Just a nice, nice cross-section of jazz sounds and hip-hop beats, grooves, rhythms, along with the occasional touch of Moog or Korg synthesizer just to bring another interesting texture in there. Feeling a light to decent eight on this LP, what did you think of it if you've given it a listen? Did you love it? Did you hate it? Why? What should I review next? And that's it. Kareem Riggins, alone together, forever.